Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Allison's Wonderland. Uh, I'm really excited because tonight's guest is Robbie Damon, voice actor who's best known, uh, I mean, Robbie's credits are too numerous to list, but you might know him as Spider-Man in the animated series Spider-Man. Uh, Robbie was also Tuxedo Mask in Sailor Moon. He is a um, Moomin Rider in One Punch Man and Sway Sway in Breadwinners, just to name a few. So I'm really excited to bring Robbie onto the show tonight. I hope you guys are all doing so well. It's so good to see you. Hey, Sebastian. Hey, Reed. Colette, what a pleasure. We would love to have you on someday. That would be amazing. I'm getting a lot of requests um, for more voice directors as well. Um, so let me go ahead and see if Robbie's here and we'll add him to the show. He's not here yet, so that means it's time for me to bam. Oh yeah. Um, I hope you guys are having a good week. It has been it has been pretty busy over here, which is always a pleasure. I know as more and more things come online, we are being presented with more and more opportunities to get out there and um, to meet people, to see people. But I don't know about you, I found it all to be at times a little bit overwhelming. Um, I'm like, wait, how, do, how am I out in this world again? Um, and it just seems that, you know, we're, we're constantly having to face these challenges of, of putting so much on our plates. And um, I just was wondering, how are you guys dealing with that? Oh, you got your second COVID shot. That is so great. Molly, you're feeling maxed out and overwhelmed as well. I know. It's, it's a lot. You, Sebastian, you were interviewed by Fred Tatashore. That's amazing. We love Fred. He's such a talented voice actor here. Um, absolutely love Fred. Um, yes, I don't know if you guys saw, um, I'm also fully vaxxed. So that is part of the reason why I'm able to be out in the world again. And, um, I just put out a music video yesterday called Vaxxed, Vaxxed Baby, which is a song that has been stuck in my head ever since I uh, got my second shot. <laughs> and I've just been thinking about that for a while. So let's see if, nope, not here yet, guys. Let me just... Let me just go. Well, I want to double check that um, Robbie is good to go. Let me send him this. There we go. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and send him this live. And then, hey, Info Bobby, thanks for joining live. Um, so I'm curious. I have some, some changes that I want to ask you about with Allison's Wonderland. So if anybody has a particularly strong thought about this, I would be so grateful for your, for your feedback. Number one, how are you feeling about Wonderland being live on Instagram? Do you still think that this is the best platform for it? Or would you rather see it, um, hear the podcast in its rebroadcast form? That That is my first question. And my second question is, if you do like seeing it on Instagram, do you prefer that we keep it the six o'clock time slot or do you want to move to seven? So let me know what you think about that. And um, yeah, you saw the Vaxxed Vaxxed. You guys, um, Let's Talk Cartoons is on here. For those of you guys that are hardcore cartoon fans, I want to highly recommend that you follow Let's Talk Cartoons because they are such a great resource for what is coming out on all the streaming and um, network TV for some of the best um properties and he he does a really good job Devi who runs um the account does a really good job of figuring out uh you know stalking basically all the network's twitter accounts and making sure that he knows exactly what is coming on you want to see it on nickelodeon you want to see this show on nickelodeon that would be amazing i love nickelodeon yay i'm so glad well ravi has just joined us guys so why don't i go ahead and add him to this feed and we will make it a thing. All right, here we go. Put your hands together for Robbie Diamond. And you have to give him a little leeway because, you know, Robbie has a new baby to give home, so. <gasps> Hello, hey, well, let me going? fix that. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, oh, it looks like we've got a second guest here, a little, let me my, see. Little, my little uh, munchkin is coming in to the say. The baby babes? Yeah. Oh, happy birthday, say little girl. Hi. Hi. <laughs> good job. I heard you just had a birthday, is that true? She can't hear you, I've got my iPod. Oh, you get your earbuds in. <laughs> 
Go Tell on, get out of here. I said happy birthday. I will. There she goes. How are you? How have you been? I'm doing good. I was good. just saying this week, you know, starting to feel the impact of COVID and like, whoa, there's a lot going on. And how did that happen? Can I handle all this? you know, socialing. Yeah, um, yeah, the real world coming back. It's yeah, not even like that it's, it's that much, happening. but just I'm used to zero. So yeah. how about you? How's I'm the, good. How's your transition um, back to, are you transitioning back to regular life or? Yeah, I've been, uh, I've been vaccinated for a while, for a minute mm -hmm. now. But yeah. um, it does seem like there's not a lot of, um, my sessions, not that many sessions are back yet. And it's sort of, um, there are a few here and there. So I've been going into the studio when they ask, but um, but the rest of the world, yeah, it's it sort of feels, it feels like we're cruising back into it. LA is being careful, but we, you know, we open up in a week and yeah. uh, like no officially, like, yeah, yeah, totally. And um, okay. yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't think we were, I think we were super precautious because uh, my wife was pregnant for the majority of COVID yeah. and then we had a little baby. So we were sort of, not at risk, but you know, you want to be extra careful with that sort of thing. And uh, now that we're back, uh, we're just sort of um, in enjoying it. We're easing into it nice and easy. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you, by the way? I like your background. Oh, this is just my, my, ba my backyard. <laughs> is it your backyard? You have like a cement wall or something? No, this is like a sunshade. See, it moves. A sunshade. It Ooh. moves. It looks so solid until you're just like, whack. <laughs> yeah, I have a full studio that I like stream out of and do my voiceover stuff. I just don't want to yeah. be inside. I don't want to be inside anymore. I'm done. Oh. No more, no more inside for me. Yeah. Yeah. You got your, you can use your outside voice. Hello. Sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 As long as my wife doesn't yell at me, but <laughs> no, it's good. Are <laughs> your neighbors. Yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah, it's good to see your face. I haven't seen you in a while. I don't, I mean. Yeah. I mean, back in studio days, time. I think the last time I bumped into you, we were on the Warner Brothers lot somewhere doing something uh -huh. or you were doing something. We might've been like two ships in the night. That's the way a lot of our Just stuff is. Pass crossing in the night. I know. Yeah. I was thinking back. Do you remember the very first time we ever met? Ooh, that's a tough one. What was the show? You got to tell me. You got to remind <laughs> well, me. Well, it, it's funny because it was um, for the pilot for Get Blake, which oh, yeah. was the show that you were on on Nickelodeon. I was I originally that. supposed to play the neighbor which was a role that then didn't make it into the series. Just got what's went away. The, the role went away, which is that such a bummer because we would have had, been able to do two seasons of fun. I thought about that. It, it, that. That show's a funny one. That's one of those ones that I remember auditioning for back yeah. when I was like non-union. I remember that was auditioning, I think in like, it had a bunch of different iterations. It was auditioning mm -hmm. in 2009 and 10 and all of that <laughs> stuff. But I don't think we were, got cast or started recording to like, 11 13 14 i can't remember i don't remember <laughs> yeah. but it would have been nice to it would have been nice to work with you yeah, yeah it would have been fun totally and um you know i'm just curious like i know that you recently posted your tiktok which is how you got into voice acting and sure do a theater kid yeah um so you know can you talk a little bit about that i mean you have a lot of formal training and you did a bunch of theater Sure. Um, I just want to like? say hi to your chat. There's a bunch of nice people in here saying all sorts yeah. of nice things. So hey, thank you. Guys. Thank you for the kind comments, chat. I'm glad you glad you stopped by. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, for me, uh, I was always a theater kid and uh, I went pro when I was itty bitty. I got my equity card when I was like 10 or so. And um, just from doing local shows and professional theater. And then I started doing summer stock when I was about 13. And uh -huh. then I went to school for it. I went and got my undergraduate degree and then I got my master's. There's and in Vegas? Mm, I got started my undergrad in St. Louis and then I went to okay. Vegas and they were like, um, I auditioned all over the place and I got in a bunch of places. But um, at a certain point I was, uh, I just had to pick also whoever uh, gave me the best scholarship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, uh, so I ended up going to UNLV with the, um, with the intention of uh, going to grad school. So, so I knew they were bringing me in, but I, um, I knew they were bringing me in to do that. And so that's why I ended up choosing that school. So I had a three-year program where they only brought in students every three years. There were 13 of us. And we, uh, we, wow. we taught the undergrads and there's a massive undergrad department. We had like, you know, over a hundred kids sign up to be a major every year. And then usually that whittled down to about 30 or 40 by the, um, by the, by the time everyone graduated and went their own ways and got into the 400 um, level courses. 
What's my favorite you, you, mu musical? Someone asked we'll my favorite. That. Yeah, I was Ooh. just gonna. Yeah, what is your favorite musical? What's your favorite musical? That, What's your favorite play? That's a that's hard to say. I've, uh, uh, favorite the, the favorite question has always been tough as. Um, <laughs> What's one of? Right. God, I think uh, I always that. was a huge uh, Sweeney Todd nerd. I really like Sweeney Todd. I, I know that's old, but uh, I, I like that. Uh, I'm uh, I was like Floyd Collins uh, the last five years. Um, Deep cut. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I um, and then as far as like, I also like the funny stuff, like comedies where my heart lies. So I loved Avenue Q, uh, and then um, more modern stuff. Obviously, like who doesn't love Hamilton? Uh, I just all the stuff I've seen on Broadway lately has been amazing. Like the revival of Oklahoma was amazing. Um, what else? Waitress was great. Uh, oh my God, the Tina musical was fantastic. There's just so much stuff out there that I I love. Um, Oh, hey, Deontay, what's up? Uh, and, um, and yeah, and then for, for straight plays, for non-musical plays, um, I love it all. My, my main course of study were the classics. So I was um, big into Shakespeare, modern styles, um, all of that stuff. So I, I, those are sort of my favorites. I think some of my favorite plays are like Love's Labor's Lost. I really love The Tempest. Hamlet's one of my favorites, of course. And then um, modern plays, uh, you know, I like most stuff that goes... I like some of the classic stuff, like the mid-century stuff, you know, like um, I love Death of the Salesman and all that stuff, but I really like modern plays. Like um, I like a lot of the stuff from the 90s, like, um, oh gosh, uh, like Torch Song Trilogy, Angels in America, and then um, all the more sort of modern stuff that's that's coming along these days, but there's not as much as there used to be. But um, yeah, a huge Sam Shepard fan. Uh, yeah, all, all that stuff. Do you find you have time for theater anymore? Nah, I haven't done no. the last live play I did was like in 2008 or nine. And I did uh, Lawrence Fishburne's play uh, Riff Raff. Uh, we did it in Hollywood. And it was really fun because he actually came and saw the show one night. And uh, <laughs> that was uh, that was a blast. We ran that in some 99 seater for like, oh, gosh, maybe three or four weeks, something like that. Uh, but that's the last time that I've been on stage outside of the, the comedy show that I do. So, yeah. Do you think that's something you'd ever want to get back into and create time for, or is it just too right, much? Right, right now my own show that I do with my buddies, my we have an improv yeah. and variety show that scratches that itch for me. So we do yeah. somewhere around a dozen to uh, around a dozen to twenty cities per year, depending on how busy we are. Oh, wow. Yeah, and, we, and usually the spaces are somewhere between a 500 seat house and like a 3000 seat house. So I get to do and then we do two shows, we do a stage okay. show and then we do a, a like a in the room sort of panel show. And that just kind of scratches that itch for me. I just don't feel like I could dedicate. I don't feel like I could dedicate myself to that lifestyle. Yeah. It's a big part of the re I mean, I've got two kids and a wife and and uh, I can't like, you know, I can't I mean, I could, but like, I can't really go on tour if I wanted to try to pursue that again. I couldn't really like spend six hours a night at a rehearsal hall. For the theater, yeah. Yeah, I know that lifestyle. I lived it for, you know, 20 years. And um, yeah. and once I moved to LA, that was a tactical move instead of New York is because I knew that someday I wanted uh, like a stable life. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And here you are. Here I am, sort of. You dad so hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here yeah. you are, rock and feel. <laughs> also, father of two. I think the funniest th father of two. I think the funniest thing is that I still have my equity card. I refuse to give it away. Mm -mm. I refuse. It has to oh, go they... forever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, do they even let? Can you even? Can, you can go anti equity. I mean, I guess you could not renew yeah, it. Yeah, if you if you didn't renew it, then it would just go yeah. away forever. Yeah, I it wouldn't go away forever, but it would be harder to like get it back. But I think as yeah. much yeah, yeah, yeah. I think as much work as I do in the in the sister unions, it probably wouldn't be too hard. I play I pay SAG enough every year as it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I I'm you know, you so you have two kids now. You have me beat by one. Mm -hmm. And um how has that changed your work? Like, do you think that it it working in animation, like that you've seen a significant shift and um, no, I don't, not, not really. I mean, um, you know, if I'm being completely candid, my, my wife has taken the, the lion's share of, uh, child raising duties. I mean, I'm yeah. very present. I'm very active when I'm not, when I'm not working, I'm, I'm at home with my family, but, um, so, so that's been easier for, for me to transition in that way. So, you know, I honor and respect her for, 
for taking that part of her life and, and changing that all around because she had a fantastic career, which she'll eventually, oh, yeah. she'll eventually reconnect with, I'm sure. But, um, but yeah, so for me, if anything, I've, I've done more after having kids because I'm more motivated. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> like, I, I feel like it's shifted because you just you know kind of what they like and i feel like sure. it gets me more excited about projects because i know what they like you know what he's mm -hmm. watching and i'm like oh yeah this show all right yeah and i mean it's, it, it's a, such a fun age too because how old is yours now he's five five yeah, yeah. um that the demographic is shifting so there's not as much um i don't feel like there's as much work in cartoons as there was 10 years ago, but um, there, and I say cartoons as like target demographic, like seven to uh, 11, and that demo doesn't exist anymore. It's mm. like, it's like six to nine. They, uh, kids age out so fast. And, yeah. um, and so I feel like there's more preschool stuff than ever. So that's kind of neat yeah. for me. Well, that's kind of neat for me where, what the age of my kids are at, uh, or at least my daughter is at, is because uh, she c can watch my stuff. Like I couldn't, I couldn't really show her the stuff yeah. I was doing on Disney or Nickelodeon. It's just a little bit too old for her. There's some scary stuff and some potty humor she doesn't need to see. But um, I'm in just a bunch of preschool stuff, so I can just go. Oh, you know, she doesn't understand, but it's kind of fun for me to be creating content <laughs> that my kid can enjoy, which is pretty neat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be great when she when she does uh, understand, and then you'll become like the rock star at her elementary school. No, no, no. Come on. You know, kids don't work that way. Everything you think is cool, they're going to be embarrassed of. It's like, <laughs> oh, my dad's a cartoon. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, yeah. I don't know. Hopefully. We'll see. We'll see. Hopefully. I, th I think it'll happen. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Fingers crossed. <laughs> it it, it kind of depends. Like, I don't know. I feel that son the sons love their moms and usually the uh, little girls love their dads and look up yeah. to them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's... Uh, I don't know. My, my, I can't tell. I'm pretty sure my son uh, hates me. Uh, he's six months old and just, uh, <laughs> but I, I can't do anything for him. All I can do is like change his diaper and hang out with him. I, dad is, <laughs> dad is like fifth fiddle, lowest man on the podium. No milk at the end of that tunnel. <laughs> no, exactly. I don't have what he, I don't have what he needs. <laughs> you do not have what you want, sir. <laughs> Yeah, but um, but anyway, yeah. it, it, I'm, I'm sure it's much different for a, a woman. Uh, and yeah. to, to be, you know, uh, job as a mom, and then to also be trying to work at the same time, I, uh, I can only imagine what that's like for shifting your career. But, um, but at the same yeah. time, you know, it's pretty, I think you can do it. I think you can do both. I had a really bad teacher once tell me like, you know, once you have kids, you have to, you might as well give up your acting career. And that was like a theater teacher and, and uh, pro, I shouldn't say teacher, wow. it was a professor. Yeah, but I got their point. And, and, and you know, uh, I'm creeping up on 40. So for me, it was sort of like, you know, okay, if I'm gonna have kids, I need to pull the trigger. And I, I wonder if I'd have had them when I was younger, if I would have been able to pursue the arts in the way that I did. And I'm not exactly, right. I don't not exactly yeah. sure if I would have, though. If you already I, had your footing. Yeah, you know. I, but though I do have friends uh, who, who did have children younger and, and did end up having a career in the arts. So it's hard to say, but I can't imagine it makes it any easier. Yeah. Yeah, and um, for anybody that's just tuning in, this is Allison's Wonderland. It's a weekly show where we interview people that work in animation and video games. So if you like mm -hmm. it, you can subscribe. There's also a question box at the bottom. If you guys have questions for Robbie, we'll go ahead. We'll take some. We'll take some couple questions in like ten minutes, and then we'll take some at the end. If that is that okay with you? Oh, I'm chilling. I'm just in okay. my backyard, uh, hanging out, watching my dog. <laughs> I think I can hear birds like chirping in the background. Oh, we have a we have a big huge we have a big huge beautiful bougainvillea that's just full of birds. So hopefully it's pleasant. Yeah. Oh, oh that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I haven't done one of these outside in a while. The last time I did the mosquitoes, I was like <laughs> getting right. eaten alive by mosquitoes. So uh, well, I it's getting, a couple it's getting to be dusk. I'm sure they'll be out for me soon enough. But <laughs> right now we're safe. I've you got I've got long pants on. Nice, nice. If we see you starting to go like this, so. We'll sure, just... sure. Um, so can you talk more about LAVA? Oh, yeah. Lava. Um, so LAVA is an acronym for uh, loud, annoying, and very annoying. Just a stupid... Is that the three of you? Or it is the one? three of us. Yeah, yeah. One, two, three. And uh, we, we never tell who's who. Uh, but um, this came about uh, five years ago. Uh, I started working with Ray Chase and Max Middleman, two other uh, voice actors. And... Yeah. Um, 
And they, um, I just had a great rapport with them right away. And we also happened to take note that we were in a ton of stuff together. Yeah. So I had been doing conventions for about a year or so and was sort of watching what was going on out there. And if I'm being 100% honest, I was like, I don't know if this is like, uh, I, I enjoy the con scene, but I just wanted to do something different and, and special and um, bring a little bit more entertainment value to wherever I went. So mm -hmm. I talked to the guys and I was like, well, hey, you guys have your theater degrees and they're both from uh, uh, UCLA. And uh, I said, do you have any improv background? They both did. And, um, and I was like, what if we did like a nerd culture sort of themed variety show with improv comedy show for these conventions and we pack it ourselves as a trio. And to my knowledge, nobody had really done this. Like I kind of like Johnny Young Bosch used to bring his band out. And I think he still does yeah. sometimes. And, and, um, and some people have like some, um, some gigs and some gimmicks that they, that they do, but like nothing mm -hmm. really like this. So, um, so that was my idea was to, was to bring this show out. And I'm super glad I did because I don't really do shows by myself anymore. Not that I couldn't, but, um, but I would the conventions, say, you know, you mean. yeah, 95% yeah. of the conventions that I do are with the guys and, um, okay. and it's worked out. So, and I wouldn't want to do it any other way now because it's so much fun. Uh, we get to do this show that we absolutely love and, um, and, and bring this sort of like added value to the cons because we do the show for free and then we just say, okay, but you bring, you, 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 you bring us out as your guests and we'll, we'll give you that, that yeah. content. And it, it's an absolute blast. So anybody who's come to one of the shows, I think they all know, like it ends up being like one of the most raucous sort of fun things that we do. And then we, um, we, we send a little merch and then we go crash at our hotel and sleep and then wake up the next day and, <laughs> and go try to entertain again. So um, yeah, it's really fun. Yeah. Oh, that sounds so fun. You're like constantly on tour with your besties. Yeah, it's, it's great. And, and, they're they're both such good guys and um you know i also i also bring my wife and my kids out whenever they want to come if it's a city they want to go to and um ray's wife julia is amazing she comes out with him pretty much everywhere and then we have extra seats uh you know max will bring some family or will bring some family and it's just kind of like a fun sort of fam family affair that we that we all have and um it's it's really a blast so um yeah. as far as the uk goes i was seeing somebody talk uh that's definitely in the cards like super soon, but, um, but we're not allowed to talk about anything until like it's official on there. And so um, we got some big things planned now that the world's sort of getting, uh, getting back. Hey, Annie, how's it going? <laughs> uh, do you uh, but, have any lava shows officially booked that you, you can shut out? Yeah, we've got four this year. Uh, we'll be, uh, we'll, but not until fourth quarter. I think that's, we wanted to sort of wait and see how things are. Yeah. We had some offers for the summer and third quarter, but um, so in October we'll be in uh, Fort Worth. And then in November, we will be in New York uh, at Anime NYC. And then we will be in Layton, Utah in ooh, December. No, oh, I'm getting these mixed up. We're going to be in Utah. Oh, that's right. Utah is in October. Okay. Uh, 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 Fort Worth is in December. New York is in November. And then we'll be at Anime Pasadena here in LA uh, in December ah, again. But nice. then, um, but that is a nice sort of soft warm in for us. And um, we'll yeah. see how, what the, what the vibe is like out there. And then 2022, we plan on being out there crushing it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lava, lava fans on the stream. Um, that's <laughs> so, Brian's that's screaming true. for help for some reason. I, I, I hope you're okay. I know. Hi, help, I, noticed, help, I, I help, noticed help. you, Strawberry Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, do you want to take a couple questions right now? Yeah, I recognize a lot of uh, names. Uh, so this we've got some crossover here. But yeah, let's, I'll answer questions. Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. Well, I mean, this is probably not something that you can speak to. But there sure. was a couple questions regarding S Spider-Man. And if it's coming oh, back. Oh, I see it. Yeah, so. yeah, there's one right there. Um, uh that one that one i'll just say uh, i'm not allowed to say anything but um i feel like the three seasons that we did wrapped up in a very nice way for, for and left possibilities for the future including your imagination <laughs> so um take that however you 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 take it but uh but i'm not currently season four is in your mind <laughs> it is yeah, perhaps but that's not official coming from me uh they did just release uh, a brand new um 
they did just release a brand new uh, trailer for a new preschool show uh, called Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends that uh, I am not in, but uh, once they talk, show the cast, you'll, you'll see why. It's uh, super cute, the things that they've, they've got coming out. So uh, yeah, it's exciting. Awesome, that's adorable. Yeah. Um, Somebody is asking, and this is a good question, other than tuxedo mask, hmm. what's your favorite roles? <laughs> Of course, Sailor Mikey. Sailor Mikey would assume that Tuxedo Mask is my favorite role. And he's right. It's what's my first anime role. Um, some of my favorites. Oh, man. That's, favorites is such a hard question. Um, right now, I'm really enjoying... Um, right now, I'm really enjoying working on this comedy show with some of the creators of um, Pinky Malinky and a few other shows that I did that is... Um, as of yet unannounced, but I'm having a blast working with them. It's a comedy show. That's where my heart lies. Um, uh, Breadwinners is one of my all-time favorites just because of the cast and um, mm -hmm. how wacky it was and that we got to do songs every time. Um, let's see. Costume Quest was one of my favorite cartoons that I worked on. Uh, as, far as, as far as anime goes, um, I'm really enjoying Jujutsu Kaisen right now. That's like one of my most enjoyable roles that I'm, I'm working on. Um, I had a fun time on uh, Kuroko's Basketball. Uh, Tuxedo Mask is up there. And obviously some of my absolute favorites are Prompto from Final Fantasy XV, Akechi from Persona 5, uh, Hubert from Fire Emblem, and uh, most recently Tuesday. I'm the main bad guy in uh, the new Guilty Gear game. Uh, and that one, they kind of just let me go off the rails and sort of do my thing. So uh, it was really fun. Yeah. Can you, uh, can you test that out? Can you, can we hear what it sounds like? Oh, oh yeah. He's, he's just sort of like, um, he started out as like sort of a bad joker. And then as it went, he just derailed more and more into this uh, almost like a bad, <laughs> a bad Christopher Walken where he's <laughs> pausing and everything he does. And like, and like, and he just, I just kind of put it all in my nose and did some rasp and dropped it in. And he's a total psychopath. So, um, so it was, um, it was fun. And the further and further I took it, the, the further and further I took it, um, expecting them to rail me in, they never did. So I was just kind of like, all right, let's see how far we can go. So, uh, it was, it was, uh, it was super fun. Yeah. Oh, that sounds so fun. Yeah. Um, have you gotten a chance to work with some of your favorite directors? Yeah. You know, I think one of the saddest things about my career is never getting to work with uh, Andrea Romano. It never mm -hmm. happened. And um, we, you know, crossed paths a million times. Like I was on one of her shows, but she wasn't there that day. And, you know, she had cast me, but she wasn't directing. And then, um, and then um, she retired and I was like, okay, well, I guess that ship sailed. But um, yeah, I mean, I have a lots of favorites out there. Um, you know, one of the interesting things about um, voice directors is it's kind of a female dominated field. There are, you know, a, a, yeah. a couple of men out there, but a lot of the top casting directors and voiceover directors are women. And um, I, I think that's one of those little known facts that's that I think is so interesting about about voiceover is that, you know, in in entertainment, which can be so male dominated sometime, uh, sometimes women have really um, have taken over the reins. And, you know, every year it's, it seems like it's a, a, a female winner for a director or casting director. But um, yeah. yeah, I mean, obviously Meredith Lane is a longtime friend and one of my favorites. And, um, you know, I remember her when she was over at Nickelodeon, uh, Colette mm -hmm. Sunderman. I mean, you know, there's a, there's a million great directors out there and I, I like them all. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it seems in casting directors in general too are often women, and it yeah. seems like a lot of times people move up to voice directing from the casting world. So maybe sure. that's the natural evolution. I think so. I think that's what what happened with uh, quite a few people that I knew. And um, and oh, and uh, oh yeah, of course, Christy Reed, she's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, oh my God, uh, Chris Salter, she's amazing. Um, yeah, I. I have a theory, but I'm scared to say it. But my theory is that uh, in general, uh, uh, women tend to excel better at interpersonal relationships. <laughs> like I just think they, uh, they, they typically are, are just better at it. And I think it requires, uh, I think handling actors who tend to be, a, I'm talking mad generalizations now, uh, actors who tend to be a little bit more of a sensitive group, uh, uh -huh. uh, uh, myself excluded, I'm pretty tough. <laughs> of course. But, but, um, but uh, 
to handle those egos and those those fragile egos uh, requires a sort of a deft and delicate touch. And I, I think mm. uh, I think women excel at that. Yeah. But that's yeah. just my opinion. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, it's a pretty, pretty, uh, I think at least 50% of the population oh. will probably agree with you. And people are naming them. Uh, uh, Linda LaFontaine, uh, 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 Jenny McSwain was one of the first people to mm. ever hire me. I can't believe I for, I didn't, I'm not forgetting people. There's too many to yes. name, but, but Jenny was um, instrumental in, she put me in my first cartoon and she's, you know, one of the absolute OGs, Lisa Schaefer, yeah unbelievably amazing we've worked together i mean i've worked with all of these people so you know uh, and and i can honestly say like i i just don't there's just no negative experiences to be had yeah yeah they're, it's they're a, fantastic it's a very uh it's an industry with a lot of amazing people yeah do you want to see my puppy zelda come here do you want to come up yeah here? let's see come here zelda Oh, she hates me. Look, she's like, forget that. I'm not coming over. That's hurtful. That's hurtful. Rejected by my own dog. Mary Aww. Elizabeth, Mary Elizabeth McGlenn, one of my favorites. We worked together on Chico Bon Bon. Uh, uh, we, she directed me for like 50, 52 episodes of that. She's also an old time friend. I first met her um, uh, on the convention scene and then we ended up working together. Oh, wow. Wendy Lee. I, I mean, really? Yeah. Well, we're really proving the point here by all the names in the chat, but, um, <laughs> but yeah. Sarah Sherman, guys, you're crushing it. These are all the best of the best. <laughs> nice. Oh, of course, it's Jeff. He knows. Uh, of course. Uh, yes, of course. And Peyton says you're looking beautiful tonight, Allison, which is absolutely true. Of course, oh, as uh, as per usual. Uh, I was I was watching you and your dude do um your what do you call that? Is that du uh, du duet acrobatic acro yoga? What yoga. is it? <laughs> it's acro yoga. F fill, fill me in. How did that? How did oh that come gosh, about? You and your wife jacket. should try it. I'm, um, ter I'm terrified. Uh, she, she'd be great. <laughs> it's really fun. I mean, it's, it's, it's yoga, but you're doing it with a partner. So um, it, it's less uh, strength based and more skill based. So it, right. takes, it, it takes a while to learn. But, you know, basically a lot of times you're looking for bone stack or, um, or you're moving through, now we're starting to do more like flow stuff, which has been really great, but sure. it keeps us connected and we have to talk through things. And because yeah. we're both learning together at the same pace, it's extra challenging because, you know, if I ever fly with my instructor, you know, it looks like, it, it looks totally different because he knows exactly what to do and how to hold those poses. So sure. us learning together is like, it's a, a challenge that I think really helps our relationship grow. Yeah, that's, what, really it's, that's what it seems like. I, it seems like uh, you'd have to, there's a certain level of trust there required between trust, each other. Yeah. And that, uh, yeah, that's awesome to see. I, re I, re I really enjoy it. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, Thank my, you. my wife has, uh, that's what she does for a living. She has multiple Pilates and yoga certifications. She has her, oh, bio no she has her biomechanics certifications. Before we had kids, she was... Um, she was um, coaching and training um, NFL and NBA players on their off season, their strength and conditioning, oh. stuff like that. So, um, and she did that for- You trust her? No, just kidding. Oh. <laughs> With she, those big, burly she NFL She is, oh yeah, of course. I always <laughs> used to joke. I, and they're like, no, they're, she's like, they're like children. She's like, especially the NBA guys. They're, they're like, they're babies, they're 17. But yeah, I would go in there and she tells a great story about, um, you know, they, she was leading them through something and they were asking about like inversions and handstands and stuff. And she's like, well, I'm going to tell you, I, I could tell you, show you how to do it. And they're like, yeah, yeah, sure. And they're like, oh, and she's like, you know, imagining, you know, million dollar insurance policies on these guys. <laughs> so anyway, she starts to show them all how to do headstands. And, uh, and all of a sudden there's like, 15 300 pound men just crashing over onto their backs <laughs> laughing <laughs> laughing about having what what fun it is but uh she, they're Flesh you know, she's, everywhere she's Muscles. terrified yeah yeah <laughs> but um but no yeah so anyway um yeah she'll i'm sure she'll get back to that at some point she's starting yeah. to take on a few clients here and there yeah. but yeah. um we definitely but, yeah. took a break after after we had our kid because it's just it was hard to find time um yeah. but I guess that's one of the gifts of the pandemic. <laughs> totally. I may had some lockdown time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think some good can come out of it. It was a horrible thing that, oh, there's the mosquito. It was a horrible thing that we were all sort of, you know, uh, had to deal with together. But I, I think a lot of people found a way to make the best of it. For me, it was, you know, 
spending time with my daughter and and yeah. um, taking care of my wife when she was pregnant and, and, and those things were kind of invaluable, but the rest of it, ooh, no, I'll pass. No, no thanks. I'll just take yeah. the one. Timing wise, I mean, I guess what a blessing, huh? Because that those are the formative years that like your daughters. Well, actually, yeah. will she remember it? <laughs> she'll, she'll she'll remember the feeling forever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, and and well, I got to be with my wife the entire time she was pregnant. Yeah. I got to experience that precious those precious years of like a two year old, which are kind of amazing like those last years i mean they're growing and they're doing all this stuff yeah. and they they need so much and they're growing so fast it was good to have two parents there and then i yeah. got to experience yeah. the first six months of my boy at home and uh and typically you're not going to get like you know six months maternity leave to be with your kids or a year to be with your kids so um yeah that was really that was really special yeah yeah Ro rohan is a big boy he's the fattest boy He's a that's your, that's your your son's name. Uh, Han, he he is in uh, the ninetieth mm -hmm. high ninety percentiles for everything: head, weight, <laughs> length, length. He's a he's a, a, a literal monster. He's like nineteen pounds and he's five months old. He's wow. a de he's a destroyer of worlds. I don't know what to do with him. I'm I don't know. I don't know what. I don't know where I'm going to put him. He's a monster. Yeah, well, you're over <laughs> six feet, right? I'm si know. I'm six foot on the nose, but Megan really? and I you seem are even taller than that. Oh, thanks. It's just you're like uh, a tall six feet. Oh, uh, it's it's the hat. It's tricky. <laughs> um, yeah, we've got some. We've got some big ones in our family, so oh, so it looks like he drew that. Uh, it looks like he drew that genetic lottery. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Better. Yeah, it's a big hit. Hey. Babies are the cutest. Oh, shoot, what's up? What, what's up, Vernon? Uh, uh, a lot of familiar faces in here. Um, I, I'm curious. You had a post a couple weeks, months, who knows um, mm -hmm. how long ago, talking about social media and how you're doing a lot less on social media. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I know you just joined TikTok. Yeah. I'm just curious, what's your relationship like to social media these days? Oh, man. Uh, healthier. I, I, yeah. think, I think before I was like a little bit too wrapped up in it, like uh, for finding my validation, especially during COVID, like in the early stages of COVID, I was, um, I was sort of using it as an outlet in sort of an unhealthy way to mm -hmm. interact with people. And I feel like I'm an extrovert in general, yeah. but, um, but yeah. So now, uh, even though I still interact, I've definitely like cut way back. I, I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to do sort of like a post and forget it sort of, sort of, uh, routine. I'm not the best at it. Like I still <laughs> like to interact, but instead of like, I was never like that obsessed with the the interactions and likes and, sh and shit per se, but, mm -hmm. um, but it was more like, um, it, it was more like I was interested in what people were, were, were saying. Uh, and I kind of had to divorce myself from that after I had a, a couple of like negative interactions that like sort of got to me. And as I get a little Ooh. older yeah. and more like empathetic, I'm feeling more sensitive about things. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm realizing like, well, I would never engage with these people in real life who are coming to me in bad faith. Why am I choosing to do it in a digital space? So um, it's not that I like, I'm mm -hmm. unconcerned with criticism. Like if there's valid criticism to be had, I'm going to listen to that and, and interact with it the same way. But people yeah. just, who just come to you in bad faith and are looking to snipe at you or, or take shots at you. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like social media is kind of set up to, to do that, to sort of empower the the people that are feeling disempowered which can be a good thing for people who are disenfranchised and trying to make a difference in the world but yeah. um but when it comes to uh someone who has any level of status whether it be you know you're jealous of someone who has a thousand followers or 50 or five hundred thousand or five million um it, it's a way for someone who feels like they don't have that to take jabs at someone and um if they do it in the right way it can be hurtful to everyone involved. So, so I had a couple of those things happen, things that made me uncomfortable, like message DMs that I got that were like, and I don't reply to most mm -hmm. of them, but that just made me uncomfortable and mean and, and things like that. And I was just like, oh, well, that's a bummer. So maybe yeah. if I just only engage with the people who come to me in good faith and cut everybody else out, and, but still be able to listen to criticism, then I'll have a healthier relationship with social media. And that's pretty much what it was for me. So, yeah. 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 Well, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, um, of course. You're not the first guest that I've had on that, um, that has had some, some difficulties. 
to them in bad faith, as you say. And I, I think it's so, oh. yeah. sorry, what'd you say? We had a pinwheel. You were, you, you were frozen for me for a second. Oh, so I missed the last um, like 10 I, seconds of what you said. Yeah. Sorry, I went away. Um, I was just <laughs> saying, you're not, you know, that's, that's actually, I've heard that from a few different voice actors about sort of them reaching this level of uh, exposure that makes sure. them almost a little bit more susceptible because if you have, you know, 50,000 followers, then you have 50,000, you know, people, many of whom you're more and more people you don't know. And, there could oh, yeah. be more what's, exposure. What's that, what's that statistic? Like uh, one in every hundred person is a psychopath, right? So let's pretend that's- Is that that's, real? <laughs> let, let, yeah, it's real. So let's pretend that's real. And then let's say that um, one in every thousand of those, and I believe this is also what was said, is that uh, as people that uh, will act on that, right? And then one in every 10,000 is someone that will act on it in a malicious way. So, um, so if you have- uh, let's say my number, you have 70,000 followers. That means you have got 700 psychopaths, 70 of them who are willing to interact in it, uh, with them, and seven that could be uh, super dangerous. Yeah. And, because, and, and, and when I say psychopaths, I mean, not just like, uh, that doesn't mean like a bad person necessarily. You could just have whatever going on in your life and never interact with it. Like, I'm definitely not like, you know, being tough on mental illness by any means. But like it, it I've had people, uh, Zelda, stop. I, I've had people threaten to kill me over an anime that I've voiced, which is like m multiple times. People who've written me emails saying that they want to do bad stuff to my family or make inappropriate comments about my wife and my kids. And for, for me, now that I have a family, that was something that really woke me up and, and made me go, hmm, okay, well, I need to make sure that, that those people um, those people aren't uh, out there. And there are so many ways yeah. now with social media that you can't protect yourself. And there are so many ways that like, if you encounter one bad person and become the, the focus of their, of their malicious intent, that they could, and this got serious for a second, but they can say anything they want or, or do anything they want on the internet with yeah. no repercussions. Yeah. Like you could say anything about anyone and, and, uh, and it sort of may do whatever it does. It's like a high school rumor. You know what I mean? Yeah. And not to say that like, you know, and I've known people that have been the target of that. And, and it's sort of, it's, it's, it's tough because there's nothing you can do about it because the instant yeah. that you were to engage with it, you give it mm -hmm. validity. So you just kind of have to sit there and go, okay, this bad person just said a terrible thing about me. And like, we're like, okay, like here's 5,000 Spider-Man fans who are shitting on me for no reason because they're taking something that I said out of context. So it's like, so you just go, okay, well, there's 5,000 people that don't like me now. And there's one person out there that's trying to actively hurt me. And all I want to do is like, make cartoons and support my family. Yeah, so it, like the digital space is like a really weird mm -hmm. sort of place yeah. right now. So um, so yeah, you just kind of go, okay. Like it's not meant to be like a pity party. I'm very grateful to have, like I wouldn't trade all the people that I get to interact with for like, just because there's a couple of, you know, bad eggs out there. But um, it does make make you go, oh, is social media even worth it? You know? <laughs> And these yeah. days, um, when you're making your own content, uh, and, 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 and it's part of the job now, um, yeah. it's sort of unavoidable. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. And how many of those people are actually accounts that the one crazy guy has made seven of? Oh, yeah. Of, sure. And, and those 5,000, you know, people are really just 1,000 and one guy that's, you know, going right. crazy. Yeah. It's like, you well, can't put too much stock in that. And I can't even, I know we've talked a little bit, I can't even imagine what it would be like to be uh, uh, a woman, uh, LGBTQ, or, or, or any a person that he tends to get targeted more because my female friends who are uh, any sort of influencer or voiceover people, wow, the stories they tell me about the things that they get in their DMs and the, thing, and the horrific things people say, I understand my privilege of being a man and, and, and you know, that that comes with its own set of problems, but like nothing compared to what, what some 
women in the business go through. It's totally wild. But, um, wow. you know, I do think that those good people, oh, oh I was saying exactly what Trombone Stabby is saying. I do think that the good people outweigh the bad. And if yeah. you've accumulated enough social credit and, and, and you are, you've proven yourself to be a good person, then I think you're shielded against, against most of those few, few bad people out there. But, um, but overall, yeah, I think mm -hmm. in order to have a healthy relationship with social media, um, a friend of mine told me only engage with people that come to you in good faith. Yeah. And, uh, it, and it's something that I've been doing for the past year or six months ago since I made that post and it's changed completely how I, I deal with social media. So, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. I took yeah. a, I was off for 14 months, just completely off. Uh, mm -hmm. I originally got off to have more time to focus on it, like a short term creative project I was working on. Sure. And then I just didn't want to get back on. <laughs> and it's sort of like, that's not the yeah. solution either, uh, yeah. especially not now when this be is becoming more and more of our work. But y if you are a digital hermit, you know, you're just kind of removing that, that piece altogether. And then, you know, eventually it's like, <laughs> yeah, well, I think, I think, all media right now is going is transitioning uh, to sort of the mm -hmm. podcast model that's been around for you know 15 20 years and then it's going directly to the to the consumer uh, mm -hmm. you know wow. so and, and I don't necessarily know that that's a bad thing but in order for that to happen uh, you have to have a rapport with them and a relationship with them somehow with and your if audience. you're yeah with your audience yeah. so if I'm making if I'm making you content for free and you choose yeah. to engage in my content, and then I offer you a way to support me, whether it be through, you know, a Twitch subscription or a T-shirt or an autograph, you know, at a at a convention or some some way for you to say, hey, I appreciate your work or I appreciate the things that you do. Um, that's for me is a really positive relationship, and but and you can't foster those opportunities um, to 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 give that entertainment to your fans and allow them to support you without having a platform. So, you know, yeah. you know, that's why I was resistant to like TikTok for, you know, two years. I was like, ah, TikTok's for kids. It's silly. And I was like, okay, Max, I made one. I was like, all right, I'll make one. And then, you know, I got, you know, more followers on TikTok in a week than I've had on Twitter in, in 12 years. So one and you know, a half million views on your video. I think I was looking <laughs> yeah. at the other day. Yeah, but that's nothing compared to, that's where all of the, um, that's nothing. That's where all of the, um, uh, uh, the main consumers of anime and video games and cartoons are now they're they're younger they're all on they're all on TikTok and it's I very TikTok, cool to see <laughs> well you know what and what I like about it so far is that it really is a post it and forget it sort of thing you make a little yeah. piece of content you put it out there the algorithm takes over and you just sort of you know yeah you just sort of put it out there and and people get to enjoy it and and um and that's the vibe. Like my wife has been on TikTok since the beginning. She's like, I don't post anything. I just love it. I, I you know, I, I read mom stuff and recipes and workout stuff and business stuff. And that's how I enjoy it. So, yeah. um, and then I went on and I was like, Oh, the vibe on here is much better than say, you know, Twitter where I, I, I love Twitter. It's like my biggest platform. Well, mm -hmm. not anymore, but, um, but, uh, it seems like it's set up to like argue like that negativity is sort of inherent there. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, each yeah. one has its own little vibe. Like each one is like a yeah. friend in like Instagram. She's like the popular sure. girl that like just yeah. cares about like what you look like. And Twitter's like the gossip. <laughs> like did you yeah. hear what that said? And then like I don't know, TikTok's just like your best goofy bestie or something. Yeah, that's like always trying to act silly. I don't know. It's just people dancing and lip syncing and, and, and making creative content. I used to love Vine. Like I grew up on yes, Vine. Yes, me too. Like, I feel like it's got a nice Vine vibe. You know, people are actually making content. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's pretty so cool. fun. Yeah, we're yeah. actually going to try out like a new Wonderland after dark kind of thing. I'm going to test it out tonight with John Bailey. We'll oh, see. Oh, man. We'll see. Yeah, Go have fun. <laughs> yeah, go and have a drink. Well, yeah, actually, of maybe not because what's the age? Which is the age? It's like. I think my average age is like 14 over there or something. Over where? On TikTok? <laughs> yeah, just that oh. of the fans. It's, it's young. Excuse me. My content is completely clean on, but my, I have a pretty clean, I will say like the occasional like dirty word or whatever, but like yeah. I don't really post not safe for work stuff. Like I have a pretty clean vibe. Like occasionally I'll curse. That's about it. We do our 18 plus lava show and it's literally like, like a little bit of gross out 
uh, humor, the opportunity <laughs> to say the the f word, and like and like, there's a part of me where I'm just like, this isn't really an 18 plus show. There's nothing <laughs> yeah. like inherently like sexual about it or anything like that. Yeah. It's it, but 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 there is some stuff that where if you don't call it an 18 plus show, like I remember one one time, uh, like a like a kid like a 12 year old came with their mom and somehow got past security. And we're in the middle of doing this bit in the show. And I see like a 12 year old out there and I'm like, get this, what are we doing? Get this kid out of here. This is a not for a, ch a child. So it's like, you know, it, 17 plus. Yeah, that's closer. But, yeah. Um, but yeah. Well, I guess but it, that's up for their, up to their parents. I guess. but if yeah, their parents yeah. should know what they're, what they're getting yeah, into. But, but like it's not an R-rated movie, you know. It's like a live show, which makes yeah. us a, an active it makes participant. You, in it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we have got a we got a big disclaimer before our show and all of that stuff, so everybody feels like they're in a safe space. But I think today, I think the, this day and age, you you need to do that because whether you like the the culture shift that we're going through or not, you still have to respect it. You still have to honor it, and you have to realize that 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 people expect those things now. So when we do our live shows, we, we always make sure that it's a safe space for everybody and there's no judgment of something that somebody's triggered or makes them feel strange or, or wants to go. I think that's the only way that like comedy and, and, and can yeah. move forward, can move forward with, uh, in, in this, in this day and age, but, um, which is just by honoring and respecting your audience, which isn't that hard. Um, if, if you do it the right way. Yeah. As long as the it's discourse is responsible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love that. And and so Twitch, uh, Lava also has like, a, is it weekly, the Twitch component? Yeah, um, we, we were really not great at being uh, regular about it uh, before COVID. And, I'm sh and we will continue to be regular about it now. It put us in a good mode. But we, we stream together once a week and we do it over Zoom and it's just audio. It used to be all of us over at my home studio and we would be on uh -huh. camera. But obviously that's not doable for COVID. Uh, and but we we were we reliably streamed all the way through through quarantine once a week on Wednesdays and um, we've got this great little this little fam it's the same three to five hundred people that show up every single time and right. with with some new blood coming in every time and they're incredibly generous and kind and have formed this little community and we only and it's it grows it's continued to grow it used to be you know thirty or forty and now you know it's ten times that and we hope to continue to slowly grow it. But it's more about um, it's more about just coming together. It also keeps us sharp. It keeps us funny. It, it allows us to continue to riff, riff and be together. <laughs> and um, this weekend we're doing uh, something insane that we've joked about for two years. We or three years. We've joked about. We started Persona the game and just couldn't finish it. And we joked about doing it all at once in like a nonstop marathon stream. Oh my so god! This, so this weekend, starting at. Uh, 9 a.m. over at Max's house. We've been setting it up for the last two weeks. We are oh, going man. to stream together for 72 hours straight and uh, try and finish the game from 9 a.m. Friday to 9 a.m. on Monday morning. We're going to sleep over. We're going to eat there. We're not going to leave the apartment. Uh, take turns? Gonna be, we're going to take turns Sleeping? playing. Um, I agreed to be the sacrifice to be the sleep cam. <laughs> as, long, as long as there's no audio because I talk in my sleep, we're good to go. So uh, yeah, we're gonna do we're gonna do the whole, we're gonna do the whole thing. It's gonna be um, a crazy experiment. But um, tomorrow we'll put out the schedule. We've got guests from the game coming over, and um, uh, we we partnered with Atlas, the company, and uh, they sent us a bunch of merch. So we're doing like giveaways every what hour the on the hour. Uh, Atlas, they make the game. They made the game Persona. Okay. Uh, they they okay. distribute it. They distribute it, and they're the producers. Mm -hmm. And um, so they, they were like, "Oh, we're doing this thing. Will you retweet it and send us some stuff?" So they sent us a bunch of stuff. So uh, yeah, nice. it's, it's going to be a really bizarre weekend. But it's sort of our. It's the first time we'll be all together on camera. It's kind of our way of saying like, "Okay, you know, we're back. We're ready to sort of um, you know, do get back into this world and um, yeah. and um." And, and enjoy it so yeah that'll be fun Aww, tell max i said hi he was one of my guests uh many years ago when this show was just a podcast we talked about it yeah and yeah and we, recorded yeah. here yeah and i told him, him you're doing it well. i was like yeah he's he's uh uh, uh we talked about it. So I was like, yeah i did that she's like she's the best i was like yeah of course like i i'm, I'm gonna level Aww. with you uh, i have a hard standing no for all uh uh like podcasts Winston. like this no no oh, yeah. no no just all of them i've said no like all for all of COVID, for like 
eight, I did, oh no, that's a lie. I did one because she was a, a Native American uh, podcaster and we were covering uh, something like really topical at the time. And then I did one for Black Lives Matter that I hosted but outside of that, I haven't done like a single podcast. It's Aww. all been it's all been media requests or like stuff like that. But mm -hmm. when you asked me, I said yes because okay. you exude a super positive energy, and uh, I knew it would be fun. And I'm glad Aww. I'm glad to talk to you for an hour for sure. Yeah. Aw, thanks, Robbie. So glad to have yeah, you on. Course. I've had a lot of requests. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I'm curious. Uh, so we've talked a lot about the business, but what other hobbies do you have that keep you inspired? <laughs> uh, oh, man, that's crazy. Uh, um, everything's focused around my kids right now. Like I'm, I've become yeah. the world's biggest nerdiest dad in the world. Like I love being a dad. I, I always thought I would. But when I have time for myself, uh, I, I do like to play a little music. I, I play guitar. I've always been a singer. And um, that's kind of like my... Too? Yeah, I used to. I've written plenty of stuff. Now it's just I'd, I'd rather just hop on Ultimate Guitars or Ultimate Guitar and like play a song I don't know and, and sing a little bit. That's kind of like my Zen time. Uh, I don't really play as much video games as I used to. I used to play a lot, but um, I felt like it became kind of a time suck. And um, and uh, uh, outdoor wise, I like I love to hike. Uh, I've been hiking a lot lately. Uh, yeah. Not lately. I've, I've hiked. I've hiked a lot for the last twenty years, but I've sort of. COVID sort of rekindled my passion for it. So uh, I've been doing the, um, I've been doing the SoCal six pack, the highest six peaks in Southern California. So I've done, four, I've done four of the six. I did um, Mount San Jacinto Sunday. So my legs are a little sore, uh, <laughs> but um, that is no joke. Uh, yeah, it's fun. We're going to do San, uh, San that one. Yeah, we're going to do San Gorgonio at the end of the summer. And that one's a 20 miler hike in hike out. So that's going to be that's a real one. That's like uh, almost 12,000 12, feet. It's like 11,000 and some change. But um, wow. but yeah, it's really fun. But I also uh, own own three companies to uh, the our lava company, a production uh, studio, and then a, a, another company that we, we're going to launch sometime uh, later this year. And so that just sort of dominates Mystery company. my time yeah yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> is yeah. it related to sort of like vo adjacent or not uh the second one no the second one is just a straight businessman but our production company is a video game production company so we have uh we have two games in production right now that are obviously you know unannounced but we'll probably be announcing one of them uh around third quarter this year uh, once we drop our trailer and then um second one we've been working on for two two years it's got a vertical our vertical slice is done and our pitch is ready. Uh, we're just sort of waiting for when people are comfortable to be in the room together. We don't want to do like Zoom pitches just because whatever. Yeah. So yeah, we're just trying to make stuff happen. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got two games now. Yeah. That's yeah, amazing. I know. Seeing all these know, eyes yeah. pop up in the timeline. I don't know if it's just people <laughs> are curious or. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those, those are the, those are the curious eyes. Yeah. 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 So, but like. Well, I know we're you, running up. And, and so do you have your Twitch tonight too? No, we're taking the night off because of our um, our big long one that starts on Friday morning. So we're oh, like, we so don't we we don't need to streak this week. Yeah, we timed this perfectly, actually. Yeah, yeah, um, we have extra time if you want to do talk about anything else or field any more questions. But um, yeah, yeah, I'd love to um, take some more questions from the audience. So go mm -hmm. ahead and type them in the box, you guys. If anybody just tuned in, the show is called Allison's Wonderland. It's an interview. IGTV show that is also repurposed as a podcast, which is why I'm not constantly just sure. saying words out to everybody on the on the stream. And and um, but I want you to know that I'm so grateful to everybody that tuned in live because that's the most fun part. So um, well, it feels really the field, the, field the questions too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, yes. Okay. I see. That's a very interesting. Sailor Mikey asked another interesting question, which is, what is your most obscure role? Ooh, obscure. Oh yeah. my goodness. Uh, let's see. Lately, I was the, oh, that's so hard. Obscure. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I've done so much stuff that you've never heard because I also do commercials. So, <laughs> so that's another thing where it's just like, I consider that obscure. I consider that sneaky. What are, um, do you have any uh, campaigns or commercials that, that oh would God, be God, What am I doing right you? now? I'm be, uh, I've been doing the uh, uh, Extremes Almonds. That's, I've been doing, I did a bunch of those. <laughs> I was doing the syndicated cut down for Two Broke Girls for promos. Oh God, so many, so many 
commercials, stuff on there. Like I, every once in a while, I'll be in a chat, and so I was like, "Did I hear it on the radio?" And I was like, "I don't know, probably." <laughs> like, like who, who's who's to say? Uh, um, but God, uh, might be me, might not. Um, got early on in my career, very, very, very early before I went union, like two thousand eight, two thousand nine. I did a fair amount of like Korean MMORPGs and like mobile games and stuff like that. So if you really dig back into my IMDb, you'll find some stuff where you'll be like, whoa, weird. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, yeah, I can't think of one right off the top of my head because it's obscure. <laughs> Somebody needs to slice all those together into some grand, that, that's your next cool. tip.com. I think that's my demo. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's all just spliced together. I'll just do it, I'll just do an obscure demo. Out. Uh, all commercials are obscure. It's, it's kind of funny. You, not if you ask the boomers. <laughs> that is true. The boomers, no. The boomers, no. Uh, but um, but but also people don't realize that like for a while, not as much so these days. But like uh, c c commercials were like bread and butter, and the theatrical stuff was just for fun. But um, yeah, I don't know. Now it, the, a lot of commercials are digital. The big the yes. biggest thing that seems to be digital, and that is certainly we, we could. I think you and I could talk for a long time about the shifting, uh, the shifting VO market, but that probably yeah. would bore you. Would viewers, bore the so. heck out of you guys. Bore them to death. Question from yeah. Jeff. Um, what's your biggest takeaway from recording from home over the past year? Uh, personally, that uh, something I already knew is that I am an extrovert and I need people. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I, I've always been that way. I'm a people person. Can you finally relax? Come up here. Come is on. that your daughter? Come say hi. What do you got on your face? Hi. She's a hey, big Zelda. girl. She's a big chunky girl. Can you say hi? What kind of dog oh. is it? Oh. She is a big old pity. She's oh. about 80 pounds of just sweet love. Come here. Um, okay. Yeah. She, um, or, or what were we saying? Oh, what were we talking about? Oh, so what we were learning from a recording at home recording is that I love people. Home. And that is my favorite part of yeah. the, that's my favorite part of the job. Yeah. I mean, I love the creative part of it, but um, I love the people part even more than that. Like I, I, I didn't realize how much I missed it until COVID came, and I was like, please. So I got I, like everybody. I had waves of you know being depressed and figuring out like what life is like, uh, and thankfully yeah. I had a, a family to keep me grounded. Um, but one thing I did for quite a while is that I, um, I turned on my camera even when people didn't ask me to so if i had a zoom set i, I would i would find that most people oh, I, oh i would oh, i would oh, find oh. that i i would find that most people would have their cameras off yeah. uh in in sessions because they probably let's be fair they probably look like shit they probably felt like shit nobody wants to see anybody and um and i was finding that i was not behaving in the booth the same way i would behave at a session i i would like you know, let's say I'm getting frustrated and the director gives me a piece of direction I don't like, you know, I'd be like, oh, come on, let's, oh, that was great. What are you talking about? You know, like I was getting negative and like expressing that because I knew they couldn't yeah. see me. And, mm -hmm. and, and, I'm, and this is very Painting candid. Your nails. For me to, yeah, I'm usually pretty never good done about that. But like, I, I would look at my phone more, all of yeah. that stuff than I would in a normal session and uh, in between takes and all that stuff. And at a certain point yeah. I was like, I am just going to start turn the camera on which requires yeah. me to put myself together you know uh, uh and then i found i would behave more like i was in the in the room so yeah. Um, so yeah so i did that for quite a while until i didn't need to anymore until it just kind of became kind of became old hat yeah it's so interesting because i am the same i'm total extrovert and that you know yeah. there's there's so many days now that i don't leave my yard. I don't leave my house. I'm just like here and I just miss people. But I even find as Zoom is like such a great substitute, but the lack of eye contact, the fact that like, if I'm looking at you, I'm here. But if I'm like, want to make eye contact with you, I need to look at the camera. That is just such a weird disconnect. It is not how we are. We are. No, we are. We are social hairless monkeys who are meant to interact <laughs> with each other and touch each other and human existence is supposed to be tactile and and face to face and uh, we are not built to observe and interact with the world through a screen period i don't believe that i really yeah. don't believe they that I, I, no uh, yes we like I, I i don't know how old you are nor do it would dare would i ask but um for, for me sort of an elder millennial uh, uh i remember a time when that 
wasn't the case. Uh, the yep. internet only, you know, just 20 years ago, it was, you know, a, occasional chat room and a few emails and, and whatever. And there was no video conferencing, none of that. Um, but I'm also grateful for it because it allowed me to work during COVID. And a lot of my actor friends who aren't in voiceover didn't have that privilege. They just spent, they just spent 18 years or 18 months uh, not working, which, uh, you know, my account will be the first one to tell you, you know, you got UVO people were lucky because you just kind of, you kind of just kind of marched on. Yeah. So, and yeah. we did, we, we marched on. And um, yeah, yeah it, 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 like today we were looking at um, an office space and um, the, we were all masked up and the, in, the real estate agent reached out to shake my hand. And I was like, oh, yeah, I guess we're, sh I guess we're shaking hands now. And I was like, cool. And it felt great. I was like, hell yeah, I'll shake my hand. Like, you know. And, and then you were like, shh, shh, shh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. He seemed nice. He seemed pretty clean. Uh, definitely yeah. washed my hands. But then, um, you know, <laughs> we had a little birthday, backyard birthday get together. Everybody was vaccinated. And it felt strangely normal, you know. And, 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 but. I think everybody's going to have a little bit of like social PTSD for the next, yeah. for the next few months as the world sort of folds, folds is, itself. I believe the term is physically distanced, socially awkward. That might be right. Yeah. Yeah. That might be absolutely hey, right. It's good to see you. Yeah. Are, you, yeah, are we yeah. hugging? Are we not hugging? I think the elbow bump is still super, I think that's still friendly enough, but, um, but, but, but yeah. it, it, you get a little skin on skin. <laughs> Yeah. What do you drink it, by the way? Apple so juice. Apple it's juice. Apple, of course, it's apple juice. Of <laughs> I was course. thinking you were having a nice glass of scotch. Uh, I am. Uh, it's a Macallan 18 apple juice. <laughs> <laughs> You're a man after my own heart. I gotta say. Oh, yeah. Like oh, account. yeah. Oh, Macallan yeah. 18. Listen, I have been the working 15. my ass off since eight o'clock this morning. Uh, so uh, I was like, I'm definitely going to have a little uh, happy hour with Allison. <laughs> Yay. Oh, I yeah, wish yeah. I knew I would have grabbed my mechanic. I don't know if I did. Uh, too much oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got to bust it out every once in a while. You got um, that, that said, that was another challenge of COVID is to make sure you like, I think a lot of people were self medicating during that time. Oh, and, yeah. uh, and, and, you know, you hear those jokes and stuff. And like, I took it as the opportunity the other way. I was like, all right, I'm going to come out of this. I'm going to lose some LBs. I'm going to get, yeah. I'm going to get my, my, my shit together because I've got no excuse. Like it's, yeah. it was like being locked in prison. And what do you do when you're in prison? You better work out. So I built this big, huge home gym that I love. And that like, you know, dropped 30 pounds and like, you know, took the, took, no took way. The oh yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. So did, did the best I could with it, but it, it's definitely like not the world's coming back. I'm like, Oh, stay on track dummy. You know, <laughs> like yeah. make sure Restaurants you do all the, are you open again. Restaurants are open again. I, I, Mixed drinks. I'm still freaked out about going to do, um, I'm still freaked out about eating inside. I, I, I'm, I, mm -hmm. I've been dining al fresco for, you know, a year and a half and I love it. So I don't know if I want to do anything else. There's um, plenty of opportunity. I mean, pretty much every restaurant still has that option, right? So, yeah. Uh, official rejectorado, uh, you're working on Greece. Are you are you crewing it? Are you in it? Are you chorus? Are you a main? Uh, 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 and Vernon, I know, I know, Vernon, you have been having a little bit of whiskey. You look good when I saw you, though, buddy. You look good. You look lean and mean, so it's not affecting you too much. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, ah! uh, yeah, it's definitely um, it's definitely been a weird time, and um, I'm yeah. uh, I don't know. I, I think my big takeaway from working from home was that I was grateful to be doing it, but it is not my preferred way. And um, now that things seem safe, uh, I'm I'm ready to get back in the studio. I had an in-studio session last week, and it was my first one. And and uh, wow. but but the production crew was still on Zoom, so I went into a yeah. studio. The engineer was there, but everybody was on Zoom, and I was just like, <laughs> okay, I guess we're still not quite there yet. We're we're getting there. We're and you there. still had to drive. <laughs> I, yeah, but, yeah, but it was nice to not have to worry about my, uh, yeah, like recording on my end or any of that stuff. So and you got to yeah. see, you got to hang with the engineer at least. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, it's a good um, experience. Okay. I'm I'm ready to go back. I think I will go back anytime someone asks me from yeah. now on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Axel Bloom has a great question, and mm. this is a question I do love to ask. Ask voiceover 
actors. Um, what is your preparation like when you when you get um, to prepare specifically for a role for animation or video game, a character? Yeah, role? I, I think it, that really depends on um, how much I'm given. So I will <laughs> prep just about as much as I'm given. And um, I don't usually ask for, for extra information unless it's offered. And if it is, I'll take it. But I think a lot of people don't realize that are that might be theater actors or traditional actors is that we, we aren't given that much time to prep, nor we've been given that much material to prep. So um, I think one of the most valuable um, skills you can have as a voice actor is um, really fast script analysis, almost to the point of like instantaneous script analysis. I wouldn't quite call it cold reading because you you're doing a little more than just cold reading, but um, to be able to look at a character and make evaluation, evaluations and strong choices about that character right out of the gate, just from sort of a cursory glance over it and then honing in on that as the session goes on, that, that's, that's a skill that really doesn't pertain to any other form of acting that I can, I can think of outside of maybe improv, improv. but even then, but, e but even then you're working off givens that you're creating for yourself in the moment. So that's mm -hmm. not even the same because with voiceover, you have to curtail the performance to fit within um, whatever parameters you're given. And sometimes those parameters are so loose and, and, and yeah. yeah, and the script is loose. And, and sometimes you don't, Sometimes, you know, unfortunately, there's sort of a range of, of quality that you're given depending on what you're going in and working on. Then there's some projects I'll go in and work on and I'll be like, oh, that was a dream. They knew the answer to every acting question that I asked and I was given art and, and context and circumstance and they had other characters queued up for me to work off of if I'm by myself. And then other times you go and you're like, you play Joe, he's a plumber or something. Good luck. And you're like, okay. Uh, and I, I'll, I'll read a dozen lines and try to figure out who Joe is in two minutes while we're getting ready to record. And I go, okay, I hope this is Joe. And then we, we, we work over it. And, um, and yeah. Um, so yeah. But and other times you have, if you do something, maybe mocap or, or whatever, you have got a lot more time to prep. But other times you do something mo like you do something PCAP where you're tethered and you're doing a line reading, mm -hmm. uh, not a line reading, but you have your script up there and then they want you to be, they want you to do like an off book read and I'll be off book on a six line sequence in 30 seconds. And that's only because mm -hmm. of m my pedigree for like doing it for a lifetime. You mm -hmm. know, and I think that's only because that's a skill set that I've evolved that I don't know if I would have evolved having not been doing voiceover for 14 years. So yeah, it's, it's a holy, that's why you, sometimes you can put an actor in, in the booth and they fall apart. Um, and vice versa. You can put a voice actor yeah. in the camera, they can fall have apart. You, so. Have you been having fun with a lot of mocap stuff? Mm. I'm not doing as much as I want. You're never uh -huh. doing as much as you want. It's my favorite. <laughs> I, I play like, is it? Is it? Yo, it's my favorite. Like if somebody Tell me were all about like, it. I've never done. If some, oh my God. If someone were like, you don't have, I, could, I would cut out an entire section of my career and replace it with mocap mo in a heartbeat. If they're like, you never were going to do another, another commercial again, but it's, you're going to replace it with mocap, I'd be like, yes. I think the only one I would maybe f put it up against would be animation because I, I, love, the, I love that so much. But I, I would give it all up to do that uh, as much. So like I've played uh, the lead bad guy in a game and then I've done about half a dozen, uh, well, about four, four PCAP, uh, characters where you're tethered, where it's just the, the helmet and they're capturing just neck and above uh -huh. and you're on script. Um, and then uh, about two, two on, on set ones and then the one, the one big role. And when I say on set, I was on set a couple of times, a handful of times. And, and so and, you um, need to be fully book, uh, fully off book for the mocap when you're on set? It's just like, um, it's just like a, um, uh, uh, um, being on set. Like for a yeah, you're fully yeah, off. Yeah, so yes, <laughs> you're you're doing this. You're, yeah, you're doing the scene work. It's you. You might as well yeah. be on a. You're on a soundstage, so you might yeah. as well be on. And you are on camera. It's the exact yeah. same as being on a, a movie set or. So a you gotta or be like fully off book, memorized, and. Yeah, good to go, and it's really enjoyable. Yeah. So wow. so yeah, yeah. You get the acting feels, all the feels. <laughs> oh yeah, and. And, and you get to do it a bunch and there's care given to every scene because, you know, if you're in the sound space, if you're in the sound studio with, you know, 
uh, uh, $3 million worth of cameras over your head, all shooting, you know, uh, 300 frames per second and each camera is worth, you know, $50,000. They're not going to, you're not going to mess it up. You're going to keep doing it until you get it right. And, um, and that, I, that's really enjoyable for me. So, yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, it's, that's a really fun experience. Um, I also like when you're tethered, when you're tethered for non PCAP VO, like uh, a lot more lately, I've been doing video games specifically where I'm just use, wearing a skull cap uh, with a microphone here and, yeah. Yeah, and then yeah. being being tethered to the back and I'm getting to like move and like act it out while having the script in front of me without having to deal with being in the confines of trying to hit the radius yeah. of a dynamic mic. And that's super, that's super fun too. Um, those are my preferred and ways to record. And you get to, to look like a bumblebee. <laughs> yeah, just sort of uh, buzzing <laughs> around <laughs> the studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, so um, let me ask real quick. Um, the Meg and Ing, <laughs> um, how do you go about memorizing something with hundreds of hours of dialogue? Genuinely curious. Oh, well, we don't memorize those. With hundreds of hours of okay. dialogue, like something like um, Persona 5 or Final Fantasy 15 or a big game, we've got the script in front of us. Um, and also, people, what people don't realize is that when um, these um, mocap games are being recorded as well, the stuff that is... Um, happening during the gameplay a lot of the times is recorded in a voiceover studio. So the script is there and all that stuff. But the cinematics it. and the live scenes and all of that stuff that you see that's face to face or going on, that will be that will be PCAP. So maybe you do um maybe you do a, a bunch of them and um and but then you maybe you have a handful of scenes or fifty scenes or a hundred scenes. And um you memorize those scenes the same way you memorize anything else. You know, you, you know what's coming up on your rehearsal schedule. You get off book, you have rehearsal time, you run it, run it, run it until it's perfect. It's very similar to um to anything you would do for, for film and television. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. I like to, I, if, I, I, if I'm scoring a script, uh, like in a traditional sense for something like that, um, and I'm really, and I've got something really beefy, I used to do, and I, I haven't done it in a long time, but um, I used to do the... Um, multicolored highlighter so i'd get a um, <laughs> i'd get a highlighter pack with like 12 different colors in it and then i would score the script by my beats and my actions and then i would break them down into memorizable chunks and highlight those chunks and there wouldn't be any particular order it would just be different colors and then i would associate mm -hmm. that with with what was coming next and i would memorize the the actions of the beats less than the words and then i would associate those actions with the dialogue this is some really nerdy ass theater pedagogy but um that was my preferred way and i'm able to do that like really fast like if i scored my script appropriately and we had a two-hour car ride and we had a 15 minute scene i'll be off book by the time we get to where we're going like yeah so wow. that's amazing yeah, yeah. yeah that was that's just like competitive speech and in, in like high school and like <laughs> like memorizing speeches and scenes and all that shit yeah do you, um, have you ever taught or do you have any aspirations to teach? Yeah, so when I was in graduate school, uh, we were not, we were not uh, TAs, we were PTIs, which are part-time instructors. So uh, we taught 100 through 400 level classes. So freshmen to, tr freshmen to se seniors, majors and non-majors. So uh, I taught um, scene study one through four, uh, Shakespeare one and two, modern styles one, and voice and speech. And then when I uh, left grad school at 25, I stayed for an extra summer and taught um, the uh, AP high school students that came in. And then I also taught the summer courses, which are mostly non-majors. So I taught um, theater history and um, seminar. And then when I moved out to LA, I taught at the New York Film Academy for about a year and a half or so. And I taught scene study uh, and uh, Shakespeare and uh, voice. So, um, so like, I have a CV, but at the same time, I don't know. I I think my career would have to take a turn, not necessarily for the worst, but like, I would have to make a life change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I mean, fit it, it in. Yeah, and I don't think I would really want to do anything but teach at like the the university level. Like, I mean, I. I can't see you myself at a high coaching. 
one-on-one coaching or anything like that? Ah, uh, I mean, I feel like I could, but I don't necessarily. No, I, I, I respect people who can do that and have the and have the uh, fortitude for that. I guess, like, I don't know. I don't know if I could do it. I don't know if I could do it. I think if you were paying me to do that, I would need to know that you had the potential to succeed. And I don't think to do it as a profession. I know that sounds shitty to say, but like as a, but as a profession, I don't think I could take money from someone who I didn't think at least had a chance, but I don't think as a professional, you You have the ability, you can say that. I don't think you, I don't, I don't think you can. And you could be wrong, right? And and always you could be wrong. I, I have to clarify that I was put on academic probation by my conservatory for my sophomore year of conservatory and I failed voice and speech. That's how they got me. Uh, no. yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's why I transferred schools because it wasn't the school for, for me. Yeah. They, I, I, I was the only person in the school that had my equity card. They weren't casting me in anything. Uh, so, and I couldn't, I wasn't getting respect. I was clashing with all the teachers and then they put me on academic pr- probation and they had a cuts program and they were preparing to cut me. Uh, like I knew that's what they were doing. So uh, secretly while they were preparing to cut Oh, you cut out. Are you still there? But while they're preparing to cut me, yes, I'm still here. You got me? Okay. Uh-oh. Yeah. Are you still here? Okay. So while they're yeah. preparing to cut, cut me, I was touring around the country, auditioning at every conservatory program in the country that whole year, as if I was a, a high school senior looking to transfer. And uh, I did their cuts program, and they were like, I did juries and they're like, well, we decided we're going to uh, actually going to have you stay. We're glad to keep you. And I was like, ah, no, thanks. I'm going to go. So I, Bye. I, left, I left and transferred anyway, because I just, I hated it. That school it was a terrible school for me. I'm sure a lot of people had a great experience. It was a horrible school for me. And um, so I had plenty of people telling me this wasn't for me, especially the person that failed me in voice and speech. Fuck that guy. Uh, <laughs> like, <geez. laughs> What's he doing Look now? at me, look at me, look at me now. <laughs> the, the best revenge, uh, my buddy Ray said this, the best uh, revenge is a life well lived. So uh, uh, that guy can blow it out his butt. But, um, <laughs> but that, that said, um, if I were like coaching, I don't know that I could be like, yeah, let's do, do six months with me and I'm going to make you an actor because right away, all I need is six sessions with you. And I would go, do you have the capacity for this? Because... I believe very much in like, I don't think I'm the most talented person in the world, but I do think that like I have an aptitude to learn. So mm-hmm. I would train someone like that. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, I, you don't have, it does not all about inborn talent. I think you can get better. I think you can make yourself viable, but um, I don't know if I could like work with someone and take their money directly and coach them if I knew they didn't yeah. have the chops. And the, 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 the truth of it is, the truth of it is, that um not that many people have the chops to make it a profession and i would and it's not just that it's about how tough you are too yeah so i don't know i don't know if i could do it that's the hard part and and the ability to keep getting up which i even think might be the bit the hardest part the bit the biggest component is like you can have talent but if you get knocked down and you can't get back up again you just got to keep getting up and it's so uncomfortable sometimes, but you just got to keep getting back up. Well, and Let's be real about it. We do, we do 500 auditions a year, a thousand auditions a year, depending on, you know, from your agents or wherever else you're fielding your auditions from. And if we book 5%, we're, we're crushing it. Yeah. Like five, yeah. 5% of, of real kind of jobs is, out of 500 or a thousand is, you know, great. And so that means, are you good with being rejected 95% of the time? Or more. Like, like, are you, t- or more, are you, you can make a living booking 1%. Like, or, like, are you, are you tough enough to, to handle getting turned down 99 out of a hundred times? And, yeah. um, and I think that's the real thing about it. Also, there are, there are so many people I've worked with throughout the years that are so talented that also just never got their shot. Uh, a, a, a big portion of it is serendipity, right place, right yeah. time, choosing the right path. And, but I do believe that um, tenacity is um, uh, 
uh, uh, tenacity is one of the most fundamental parts of all of it. Um, the, the people that it's really a war of attrition, especially in LA. And, and I think I was in LA in a really unique time. I graduated grad school in 2007, not the best time to enter the world. So I came to LA, things kind of cruised and I like booked a animated pilot, like my first month here. And uh, I was like, oh, this is gonna be easy. And then the housing market crashed and the writer strike happened and the yeah. whole city I will say this, the writer's strike was almost more freaky than COVID in Los Angeles because people weren't just staying inside. People were leaving in, dr in droves. All of Hollywood shut down. There were no such thing as a protocol. It was the, it was the Writers Guild strike in 2008, mm -hmm. late 2008, yeah. eight, eight, 2008 to almost 2009. And if you're unfamiliar, uh, everything shut down. Commercials, television, film, animation, everything just shut down and um i lost my job until i was working at a television production company i lost that job i couldn't get there were lines around the block of actors trying to get waiter jobs with resumes i remember i couldn't get a job with a master's degree as a pizza delivery boy uh it was um it was it was wild um but and a bunch of actors left but the people that stayed and toughed it out and dealt with it as soon as things came back which they always do um those people reap the benefits so i really started to come out into the scene in like 2009 uh and um and uh, and because i literally think it was a war of attrition there just weren't as much there wasn't as much competition and as you get older and move into older roles that remains the same um you know i don't have many friends now who are creeping up on 40 who are still in the business and I work with thousands of people and a lot more of them are chiropractors and real estate agents and investors and teachers and many other normal, respectable, fantastic jobs. And these are all people I thought were some of the most talented people I ever worked with, but it's a grind and a hustle. And if you're not yeah. built for it, you're just not built for it. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> I hope that's not scary. I hope that's not too serious. Yeah. So come on in, it's really great. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, Robbie, anybody can do it. If I can so do it, awesome. anybody can do it. I'm an idiot. <laughs> if I can do it, you can do it easily. You just have to be tough. Yeah. Just tough. Get those, get those muscles going on. Um, I want to thank you guys so much to everybody that joined in live. If you like the show, next week we have Brian Hall coming on. Brian oh, nice. is an amazing uh, content creator, YouTuber, and voice actor starring in the new uh, Hotel Transylvania 4, um, as well as Tangled, the animated series. Um, he's going to be so much fun, so I'm really looking forward to that. And then I'm going on vacation to Yellowstone, so I will not see you the week after that. But I bet um, we're going to be on vacation at the same time. It's going to be yay! awesome. <laughs> preschool, preschool rounding up for the, for the Oh, yeah. This one. Yeah. Aw, well, I can't wait to hear all about it. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, Robbie, you're amazing. You inspire me. So I really appreciate your time. Ah, you're amazing. Thanks for having me. And, yeah. Oh, uh, hope, hopefully. Can I ask see... you one more favor before yes. you go? Yes, of course. <laughs> do you, would you mind just saying like, hey, check out this show. I was just wondering if cool. I agree with my family. Let's do it right now. How do I do it? <laughs> Tell me what I need to say. You hit me with it. You, I mean, you can say, you can put it in your own words, but just like you're watching, you know, you're watching Alice in Wonderland. This is, uh, cause someday I want to edit these like story reels together. Of course. Um, but just like, um, this is Robbie Damon. You're watching Alice in Wonderland. I love the show. Something like that. Or you got it. anything in your own. Hey, this is Robbie Damon and you are watching Allison's Wonderland. It's the best show. Tune in, stream it, download it, do it. You know, you want to. <laughs> There you go, guys. That was amazing. All right. Well, we're, you know, if, if we're going to go jump over now and say good on TikTok, if anybody wants to join us over there, Robbie, it seems like you probably want to go and be, spend some time with your lovely wife, but um, I'll definitely be in touch. And thank you so, so much. Well, this I hope fun. to see you in the studio, the studio soon. Have Me a good one. too. Oh, wait, I got it. Perfect. Come here. Who's Come this? Here. Full <gasps> circle. Full circle. Say bye-bye. No. Oh, bye. Bye, honey.